Hey guys, Sham here, and today we'll be looking at the Ken Jida S7 phone, which uh, currently retails on Amazon for $145. And on the product page, it boasts an unlocked dual SIM smartphone with a 5 inch uh, display, which is currently running at a 720p resolution, a 13 megapixel back camera and an astonishing 4,500 milliamp battery with a fingerprint scanner. So um, I'm uh, quite interested to actually see what you get. Now I have been using, using this phone for the last two weeks and this is kind of like my thoughts of uh, what you get. So when you open up the phone, you'll actually get the phone itself. You get a clear case, which is awesome. I wish more manufacturers other than OnePlus would actually do this. Um, it does come with an included screen protector, which is kind of like a matte-ish type look, so I really do like that. Um, inside, you also find the quick start guide to show you how you use the, the dual SIM. Uh, it has the one-year warranty, so that's awesome. comes with a power brick, a micro SD cable, which is also cool, and a pair of earbuds, which no manufacturer does give any... Uh, no manufacturer gives this anymore, but uh, hey, it was nice for them to give it. It's not really that great, but it gets the job done. Now, taking a look at the phone, you notice that it has like this kind of carbon fiber-esque look. It looked like a D-brand skin at first, and it's plastic, but it actually does feel pretty good in the hand. On the side, it is a metal rail, so that's pretty cool. And uh, you'll find your power button, volume rocker at the top. You don't see much. Bottom. You have your bottom firing speaker, which isn't that great. You have your micro uh, SD port for charging. You have your headphone jack, which is uh, pretty cool. You have your fingerprint scanner. And this follows uh, kind of the old Samsung layout of uh, nav key. So you have your return button on the right instead of being on the left. And you have your multitasking on the left. So that's interesting. Um, you can open up the back in order to uh, install a SIM. But as you can tell, it's actually on pretty tight. Let me see if I could open this. Okay, it's a bit tough to take off, but once it's off, you see the tool, the dual SIMs, as, as well as the micro SD uh, port. So this comes with 16 gigs of memory and you can expand it to more which is pretty awesome but uh yeah overall the build feels pretty good in the hand and um, as a phone it's pretty comfortable now I have been using this for two weeks so um, while using the phone um, I've made a lot of changes to it so as you can see the lock screen looks very iPhone-esque and uh, when you unlock it with the fingerprint scanner it's gonna open up now I currently have a uh, Novo launcher on this. The reason why is here, let me show you the stock uh, launcher that they have. The stock launcher that they have is a complete uh, iPhone clone actually. So this is their, um, it kind of looks like a, the Xiaomi uh, Mi uh, UI. And like, look, even the settings, if you open the, up the settings, it looks exactly like an iPhone. It doesn't have the same uh, functionality as the iPhone obviously but it's gone out of its way to look as convincing as it can so like even the bottom bar has like this iPhone-esque look you can control like the brightness and stuff from there so uh, that's interesting so while using the phone I, 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 I couldn't take this so um, I just ended up uh, using Nova Launcher as my default uh, skin and I wish more companies kept stock Android because when you have all these fake iPhone uh, skins on top it really does slow down the phone and although this has two gigs of RAM that's not enough especially today so you want to save as much RAM as you can and uh, using a uh, fake skin doesn't really do much but once you have Nova on it it's actually pretty snappy as you can see um, you know apps they do take a while to open but once they open they actually work pretty well so um, as a burner phone on the side, as my current phone that is shooting this is an LG G4. So going from an LG G4 to this was kind of a step down in terms of speed, but um, 
I got used to it. It's actually not that bad. And if you're doing regular things like going on uh, Facebook Messenger and just talking to your friends and stuff, like it's not that bad. And once you install like Google Keyboard and stuff, it works pretty fast. Now, um, one of the things that really got me excited about this phone was um, its battery. So it said it's a 4,500 milliamp battery, and I thought I was gonna get like four days worth of battery life. Now I forgot this is Android, and Android isn't as efficient, but I was able to get at least um, a good day to probably a day and a half worth of use, which is cool. Now the only thing I have a problem with is first the standby time. If you notice, the ba battery goes down in a very linear fashion, which is fine. But th those earlier hours, the phone was just chilling there, like I wasn't using it or anything. So that. I don't know, um, could they do more optimization? Maybe, but uh, don't expect to use this phone to more than one day, especially if you use your data a lot. Um, also, another thing, please, 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 put quick charge on your phone. Um, I have a quick charge 2.0 and 3.0 adapter in order to charge this faster, and it just doesn't like it. Like, it charges super slow. So even if you have like 20 minutes to go out uh, and charge your phone, it's not really going to do much. You're probably going to get five, maybe 10%. Whereas one of a newer phone, like a OnePlus 6, you would get almost a full charge within like 30, 40 minutes. So and that's one thing. Another thing is the camera. So uh, if you open up the camera, you notice it first follows the fake iPhone-esque look. Now, can you get good shots out of this? Yes. Um, if you have good lighting, let's see if I can get my phone to focus. If you have good lighting, you can take pretty good photos. But uh, the second it's like a bit hazy or it's like afternoon time, just forget about it. Um, the camera is good enough to like, if you're doing work and you send like an invoice to a customer and like scan a QR code or something, it's fine. But don't expect to be using this phone to Instagram like your favorite photos and stuff. Uh, for, for this price point though, I can't really complain. For $150, you're getting a whole lot of phone for like a quarter of the price. And um, I would recommend this phone for parents that are looking to get a phone for their kids just because I see kids in like grade four running around with like iPhone 10s and then they'll crack the screen and to replace the screen costs as much as like this phone, which doesn't make sense. You're a kid and you're gonna be like reckless and stuff. So with the phone that this that is like this cheap, you don't really worry too much about um, you know scratching it up and stuff. And it does have like metal rails and stuff, so it does feel good in the hand. But like, uh, it won't hurt as much. And as a music player, I think this would replace iPods just because, you know, especially now with uh, streaming, if you have Spotify, Pandora, whatever you have, it works pretty well on the phone. Now, thank God it has a headphone jack because uh, the the speakers itself aren't that great. But you know, when you're streaming audio and stuff, it's When you stream audio, it hurts. It honestly hurts. It works as a ringtone. It'll wake you up, you know, like an alarm clock, but you won't be listening to your favorite FLAC files on here. So overall, um, I do like this phone. For $150, I can't complain. And what you get is a whole lot of phone. Like, it has a fingerprint scanner. Like, my phone itself, the LG G4 doesn't have one. And I looked online at uh, Facebook Marketplace to see phones priced around this range. And you're looking at like old iPhone 5s, broken iPhone 4s, like uh, to get a phone with Android 7 compared to like an iPhone that's probably bogged down by updates and is probably not going to get any more updates, I would recommend this. Now, would I recommend this to use Snapchat or something? No. First, Snapchat sucks on Android. Second, this camera isn't that great. And third, I didn't show you the front-facing camera, and the reason is it's an absolute potato. Um, so don't use this for Skype or anything. But if you're just using this to play music and stuff, you're fine. Uh, besides that, leave your comments, questions, and whatever your concerns in the comment section below and tell me what you think of this phone. And uh, if you want me to test anything, please do. And uh, thank you for your time. Thanks for watching.